All right, let's turn on some lights. So, let me turn on more lights here. I meant to do this during the day, but you know, that's what you get. So, all right, here is our camper, our Cirrus. So, first things first, let me close this door here. Um, I think the door I saw on the 2020 ones, now they have all these pockets on the door, which is cool. Honestly, I'm probably going to put some sort of organizing thing here to use this door space. The window, honestly, is, it's, it's cute. It's got this like pizza pie, uh, -huh thing that opens and closes. Um, even though right now, of course it's, there you go. It's not doing it. Uh, it's kind of nice. You can peek to see who's outside. I can see the usability of that. I don't like how it lets a lot of light in. So honestly, usually when I go to sleep at night, I'll leave this closet door open and I'll hang a jacket here to block the light. So if I had one note for improvement is there's got to be some sort of porthole cover to block the light out of this because I like to sleep in the dark. Um, so that's the door. Um, let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> so this closet, not much to speak of. Uh, it's a cool closet and, um, fairly big. I got some stuff in there and, uh, right in there, you can't see it, but that is the, um, okay, let me turn on this light here. There we go. That is the Aldi, the glycol storage tank. And actually mine is getting a little low. So I'm going to order up some glycol. Um, but anyways, that's right. That's what's right there. Um, actually, now is a good time to talk about the floor. So honestly, you can see here I put this. Uh, this is called Ram board. So in the movie industry, we use this a lot. When we shoot in people's houses, we throw this on the ground to protect the flooring of whatever house we're shooting at. And... Um, I don't know about this this flooring that they gave us. Um, it has a kind of a funny textured feeling. I would have liked more of like a smooth, easier to clean um, floor. Because um, you can use this off-road off, off -road a lot and stuff like that. And so I don't really, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I kept imagining that it was going to get stained. So the my first thing is, especially when we go to the beach, because this gets really sandy. Um, I like to use this sort of disposable protective thing because as you can see here, all the stains from cooking and stuff. Um, so I have this pattern, I cut it out and then occasionally I'll throw it away. Um, right now, this one's pretty, it's about time to throw this one away. But so I do this just for, because I like to take care of my stuff and it's such a high traffic area that, um, you know, seemed like a prudent thing to do. Also, I was just worried about how the this textured surface was going to age. And uh, I was worried it was going to stain really quickly. I don't know. Maybe I'm being paranoid. Um, maybe not. But uh, I thought it was a little bit of an odd choice of sort of material. It's, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm sort of new at this. So I'm not a huge fan of the texture. Uh, seems like it doesn't probably won't age or wear very well. That's why I'm trying to take care of it. Um, so let's see here. Um, I absolutely, whoops. I absolutely love the, um, absolutely love the lighting that we have in here. Obviously I'm a cameraman and so I can appreciate this sort of like backlit wall. I, I love the white countertops and sort of like the full, interior design of the whole camper um i definitely give them a thumbs up um in that arena in that area um no no complaints there i really like that um a lot of people have pointed this out this is the sink and um it's very shallow and of course they do this because um they want to give you more space here for storage, but honestly, I don't see 
this saving me much space. If they would have made it just like three or four inches deeper, it would make the sink much more usable. I don't really see us losing that much space because you still have the plumbing right here. So, I mean, a deeper sink would have been much advantageous, uh, much preferable. And I think it's because they're using this off of one of their other models and it's probably like a business decision because they're already buying these for another model that doesn't have as much room as some of these truck campers do maybe one of their tab trailers who knows but i know i have seen on the facebook groups people swapping these out um they even posted links to the models and how to's and basically they have some that actually drop right in you don't even have to cut the the countertop and they're much deeper so that's something i might do so here's the water, and as you can see, very good water pressure. So I don't understand why the outdoor shower doesn't have any water pressure. It's kind of frustrating. Um, anyways, um, that is the sink. Um, so cool, uh, good water pressure. That's good. Uh, I just wish it was deeper. You know, again, you know, I'm. It might sound like I'm being a little bit harsh, but. I have high expectations based on the price point of this camper and um, just because they did such a good job like with so many things that you sort of your expectations shift and you you kind of want more from from every area so this is the Aldi the touch panel for the Aldi system um, and obviously this like I mentioned this is probably one of the key reasons why I wanted to get the Cirrus. Uh, I think it's an extremely smart solution. Basically, it uses glycol to heat up the boiler, which is right underneath here. Um, it heats up the glycol, which then heats up the water, which then circulates with pipes around the whole camper. Um, if you see here the cutouts along the floor, that's where there's like a radiator with fins and that's where it radiates heat outwards. So the heat comes from the floor and rises up. So, and then they have those radiators all along the edge of the bed. And so what that gives you is a very even uh, distributed heat, which is fantastic. And most importantly, it's 100% quiet. So the Aldi system gets a really big thumbs, thumbs up. I did have one problem with it once. It gave me a big error code right here. Um, and so I looked up a video online and you basically, you take, you know, you lift, take the wood off of here and you get access to the Aldi system and you unplug the main power. Essentially, you just reboot it. And so you unplug the power, you plug it back in and the error code went away. So that was the only problem I had with the Aldi. Um, I love the fact that it's a touch panel it makes me feel like we are uh, actually in 2019 and not in the 80s um, and so really cool system um, so the Aldi gets a big thumbs up um, this is where you turn on the water pump you get your battery reading your fresh water your gray and you're black you can see we're kind of full at the moment i just came back from a trip and i haven't dumped anything off yet so you get a power outlet um and okay the stove so it's a dometic stove along with the dometic uh sink so the stove is all right <laughs> um i'm gonna not give it a thumbs up i'm gonna stay neutral with this um, you know, my $50 Coleman camping stove has a, a push button spark igniter. Somehow in this super expensive camper, I have to bring a lighter and almost burn my finger. And while I got to hold the knob down to get the stove lit. So it's a very small sort of annoyance and gripe because my $50 camping Coleman stove, they put a little sparker spark button uh, an igniter button uh, as well as like my you know relatively inexpensive uh barbecue and stuff 
so yeah so anyways um the stove works fine it cleans fine um it's just annoying that i actually have to use fucking lighters and almost burn my hand you know because uh, invariably i never have the long stick lighter that i want to buy um and then you got to hold it down and all this shit it's just it would have been nicer nicer if they just would have given you a slightly better stove top um at least one that you don't need to have matches i mean if you don't have matches if you ran out of matches or your lighter you ran out of your lighter you're fucked <laughs> you can't use your stove which is honestly in a camper instead of like i'm camping uh is kind of ridiculous if you ask me um it's kind of a slight disappointment honestly um the let's move up here okay so uh i really love this push button system for opening and closing the storages and um i think that um that's hard to find anyone who would argue with that um and moving on so one of the biggest features here of the kitchen you got really small sink really small stove and a absolutely massive microwave so this is another one of my major gripes um honestly like i said the microwave doesn't even really run on my Honda uh, 2000 generator. Like it'll light up, but I have to turn the power way down if I that and it then at that point it doesn't even work. Honestly, I've put food in there for five minutes in the low power level and it doesn't even heat up the food. Um, and so now I need a really big generator to run this and it takes up so much space. And honestly, most of the time, most of the things I want to use the, the microwave for, I can just put it in a pan and heat it up over the propane. So probably besides the little uh, pass-through door that I find completely and utterly useless so far, and just a source for cold air to come in, and light, by the way, because there's no curtain on there or anything, so a lot of light comes in there, I would say... The number one useless feature, and obviously this probably accounts for a good amount of the purchase price, is this uh, this microwave. And so far, um, I've only used it because I wanted to see how it worked. Um, most of the time, I heat it up with the stove. So if there was an option for that to come without a microwave, I probably would have accepted that. I much rather would have a little... Uh, oven a little electrical it could be an electrical oven or even uh, a gas oven obviously would be the best an oven would be much much more useful you know i could put uh lasagna in there heat it up in the oven along with a bunch of other stuff so a little oven would be much more useful than a microwave the microwave takes so much power and it's actually pretty heavy and it's very high up in the camper and it's massive and it's almost bigger than the microwave at my house um and so I find the microwave not the best feature. Um, and so as you can see here, I end up using it for storage quite a bit, you know. Um, and yeah, so anyways, that's the microwave. I would say that's a thumbs down on the microwave. It's very pretty, very pretty. I'll give it that. Um, it's very big and kind of useless. Um, so let's see here. Um, okay the bathroom let's go into the bathroom so um the bathroom very cool you got the flip up sink there's the toilet there is the drain right there uh i would say i wish they would have sloped the floor more so that water ended up in the drain easier because if you're not perfectly level like has happened to me recently and you take a shower all the water ends up in the other corner and doesn't really drain you know, you could just say, okay, just got to level up the camper. It's just, but if, the way it is, there's such little slope to this floor, this shower pan, that unless you're perfectly level, a lot of times the shower, the water doesn't actually pull in that corner. Um, taking showers here, uh, no real complaints about the shower head or anything like that. Um, hot water is at a premium you know you can't take a really long hot shower you kind of have to be very um judicious about 
you know, how much hot water you use. But anyways, it works. Um, you know, it's nice to take a shower for 40 years of my life camping, tent camping. Um, having a shower is a real luxury. Um, this is the built-in storage they give you. Um, it's all right. Um, this is the little shower curtain, which is okay. It's actually a little um, annoying, honestly, if I'm going to be honest with you uh, a lot of people say yeah it, it's a little bit too long you kind of have to hem it um so that it's shorter but anyway it's not a big gripe whatever they gave me a shower curtain that's fine um mm, this guy this fan they left a wire hanging and as you heard the fan is touching the wiring so that's annoying it's actually something i don't really use very often but I've seen some people swap these out for a better fan. Um, let's see here. All right. So let me talk about something. So here is the sink, right? It's really cool. Uh, it's very smart of them to do this flip up design. And everyone talks about it in the videos. Honestly, though, so far, I've, I've used this many, many times. And I never brush my teeth in there. First of all, the sink drains horribly, right? This tiny little drain here does not drain well at all. Um, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Uh, some people have talked about it in the Facebook groups. But honestly, the drain sucks. And it's such a small bathroom. I'm not a, I'm not a small person. But it's such a small bathroom that so far, every time I, I use the camper... It's so much more comfortable to brush my teeth right here. And then I just use the sink. And so I would have, if I were designing this, I would have deleted the, 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 that, uh, that sink, honestly, just get rid of it. If you got rid of it, see my other gripe with the bathroom is you see the toilet, you see how close it is to this wall. So my knees are almost touching this wall. So. You see, I don't know if you can tell, but you see how far the back of the toilet is to the wall. If you got rid of this sink, you can actually move this toilet four inches that way. And I have to say that would make a huge difference in the comfort of using that toilet. Um, and so honestly, if I was, and I am giving my review of this and, and I'm very design minded, I honestly, I would have gotten rid of the sink and just... I'd be fine with just the toilet in there and I'll use the sink in the kitchen for, for, you know, brushing my teeth, which is pretty much all you use it for anyways. So, all right. Uh, the other thing is to turn on and off the light for the kitchen or for the bathroom, all of the lights actually they are all on the ceiling. So, I mean, kids can't really turn any lights on or off, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I have an 18 month old, so it's not really a problem yet. Um, all right. So my major, another major gripe. So they have these, all the, all these things, right? The, the slide, the, all the drawers and stuff. I would say on my first trip, my first trip, this one stopped working. And then on my second trip, that one stopped working. And it's just been like that ever since. Um, basically there's a little clasp in the back that like closes shut and then it doesn't want to open anymore. And so it won't lock. So I don't understand why they didn't just use this system. Because honestly, I've seen that system used for drawers in other, uh, in other uh, campers and whatnot that I've seen on the internet. And this system is clearly flawed. Because I'm not the only one with ugly tape on my drawers and drawers that don't close. And I've been told, oh, yeah, you can go to Home Depot and buy the little clasp thing at the back. But uh, there's something that's problematic with this design because it just fails way too quickly. And now I have a nice new camper with tape all on the doors. And it's just frankly very annoying that I've had to deal with that. So that's a, you know, gripe number three, I would say. Um, the dinette area, nothing really to complain about. Um the table is a little this the securing mechanism back here 
is a little on the weak side and i discovered that as you can you can almost see there um that pulled out of the wall and there wasn't enough screws in there and it's just what happens is people put their hand on here to lean to grab stuff out of there and they end up messing up so if they just needed to a little bit more robust mounting on the on the table um i like the table size it doesn't bother me um this goes down turns into a bed like you've seen in all the other reviews that's nice we haven't used that feature yet um here we go this is all storage um up here and um no complaints there of course they're using the cool you that never fails push button system uh, there's a hinge all along the bottom. This drops down, which is a very common truck camper feature. Turns into a bunk. Supposedly holds up to a 70-pound child. Although, uh, uh, I don't know. Or maybe someday I'll find out how, how good that is. But, um, yeah. Um, these lights, uh, they're cool. They're a little harsh, I would say. Um, I've seen people replace these for, like, you know, with different color lighting. I'm not really going to complain about the lighting. I'm, I'm, I don't mind it so much. Um, all right. So uh, the next thing to talk about is the fridge. So the fridge, it's a Norcold something or another. Um, it's, it has an automatic mode, as you can see there. So it runs on electricity or propane uh, or, you know, um, and it switches automatically. Um, it takes a long time to cool down um, from hot. And so that sort of, you know, is a little unfortunate if you ask me. Um, I have, I'm used to an ARB fridge and um, it stays much colder. So let's see here. This has been parked here and it's at 42 degrees. Which, you know, it's not horrible. It's cold. The water's cold. But it's not... I mean, my ARB fridge is amazing. Um, and so... And then when this fills with food and stuff, apparently this only works when there's air flowing through these fins. So as I read on the Facebook group, people are like, oh, buy a little air circulator and put it in your fridge. And actually, this has helped. As people open and close this fridge... Um, on a daily basis on especially on hot days the temperature inside just obviously keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter so you need all the help you can get and that little recirculator is really nice um, here's the freezer um, it works really well um, it does its job no big complaints my sort of general complaint about the fridge is just takes a really long time in my experience to cool down um, once it heats up as you're using it throughout the day, it doesn't really cool things down very, it doesn't get cold again pretty fast. Um, it's just not that efficient. Honestly, if I'm going to be totally honest, my ARB fridge is freaking 30 times better than this fridge. Um, does obviously the ARB fridge doesn't run on propane. Um, but, um, so it's kind of apples and oranges, but a fridge is a fridge. That one, my ARB fridge cools down beers to almost frozen in like a few hours. This one I have to turn on like almost two days before I leave to get a decent temperature out of it. Um, let's see here. Moving on. All right. So moving on. They bolted this, screwed this down. And I've had to go in here so many times. And I never screwed it back down obviously i know why they do it for liability reasons but once you unscrew it i wouldn't put the screws back because honestly i have to come in here all the time um that is your water pump as far as i understand it this is your solar controller i have no idea why they put the solar controller buried underneath the step uh, i've had a lot of problems with this solar controller and so i'm frequently having to pull this um, I've had some weird electrical problems with this camper and a lot of times basically I just that's like a big main breaker switch of some sort 
I f- cycle that on and off, and that has fixed a lot of my problems I've I experienced. Um, but I have no idea why they didn't put that solar controller in a place where you can easily monitor it and go, oh, I should probably clean my solar panels because my efficiency is down, or oh, there's a problem with my solar panel. So actually, the last couple times I've gone out, all of a sudden, you know, three hours into after I set up my camp, I noticed my batteries were at nine volts. And I'm like, oh, my my solar isn't working. And um, I looked and you can even see, let's see if I can get down there. You can see this wire right here, like bubbled up. So it would had a bad, it had a bad contact and it almost burned, it melted the plastic on this solar controller. So I think I have a picture of that I'll, I'll show you guys so you can get a better look. But luckily I plugged it back in. I cycled the switch and it started charging my batteries again. But I've heard of a lot of people upgrading this solar controller. So that's probably something I'm going to do. Um, because I haven't had very good luck with that solar controller. And, um, you know, uh, I wish it was like up here somewhere. Or honestly, there's lots of places for you to put the solar controller. Um that's something actually so the thermostat is in this area because here's the aldi people have complained that when they're cooking it affects the thermostat which makes sense actually they put the thermostat right next to the stove so pretty much anywhere would have been a better place for the thermostat uh they could have just reversed this put all of this over there but maybe they didn't want to do that because of the water splashing but anyways it's not the best place for the thermostat um i haven't had too many problems but i have read a lot of people complaining about that thermostat um so location of the thermostat maybe not the best um and the solar controller being buried i think is a big faux pas uh i would have liked to have access to that solar controller and of course it's next to the stupid window um, the next thing I'm going to talk about real quick is just sort of finishing, you know, I was, I've had a much better, more higher expectations, uh, of, on the general build quality of the entire camper. Um, this is a very new camper and this happened almost like the first weekend right there that started to pull away. Um, the first time this is kind of an annoyance this little wall they put here um because you're always sitting right there and then you have your legs over here and this digs into your legs very annoying very annoying also it also makes it very hard to make the bed um i'm dangerously close to just taking a saw and cutting this right off especially because one of the second or third times i had my legs draped over here you guessed it, the lip of this thing peeled right off. And so you see here, I put a piece of tape so that I was like, well, at some point I'm going to get some wood glue and glue the trim back on. But honestly, um, so same problem over there as I found here with the trim peeling off. It essentially is what happened right here. This started to peel off, so I put a piece of tape on there to prevent it from getting worse. But honestly, <laughs> my desire is just to cut this out entirely like maybe from here to here because it's a very nice place to hang out actually and that just is extremely uncomfortable and digs into your legs but yeah so just like the fit and finish on actually a lot of things is a little bit subpar i would say uh like they're rushing i found tools left in the compartments and a lot of wood shavings in a lot of places where I wouldn't expect it and things like that. So not a huge, a little bit of a disappointment there. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about here is the sleeping quarters. Um, very nice. I like, again, I love the design. I love all the storage you have there. We got storage along the sides. Um, one thing that is entirely retarded just really bad location is the charging station. Uh, there's an, uh, an outlet and the USB right there. So you're going to break all your USB cables because you, you're, you're leaning up against, you put the pillows there. And then when you see it, you broke your cable. So I have no idea why they didn't take that and put it off to the side. 
no idea why they put it right in the middle of both your pillows. Um, so I've already broken a handful of charging cables. And so that's really another really bad point, design point. Um, no idea why they put it in the middle of two pillows. Um, so anyways, uh, that's a gripe. So once again, I would say this stupid window, that silly location right there, the unnecessarily massive microwave. Um, and finally, as far as like design wise, is this entertainment center. So this is on a hinge, as you can see there, there's the hinge and it swings out this way. Now, of course, if you have any sort of like comfortable bedding, good luck getting this thing to open because it gets bunched up on the bedding and you can't open and swing out the TV. Um, the entertainment center itself, let me, let me get up over here. Entertainment center itself. Honestly, this is another one of those areas where I wish I could have just ordered the camper without this because between the TV and the entertainment uh, controller um, and this cabinetry and all the wiring they had to do, probably could have dropped the price of the camper by quite a bit. And honestly, I already ha everyone has these really high quality Bluetooth speakers these days, which we take outside and I could bring in here. So uh, having speakers in the camper is nice, but they're such, let's be honest, really shitty speakers, right? That the sound, it sounds like shit. Um, it's interesting that you can isolate outside to inside in the zones and stuff. Um, but honestly, the, sh the speaker quality is so bad that I'd rather use my portable Bluetooth speaker. It sounds a million times better. Um, the TV is extremely low quality. Um, you know, every day you can, I can go to Fry's here in, in Burbank and buy a 32 or a 40 inch 4k top of the line TV for like 200 bucks, maybe even a hundred on black Friday. This TV is like barely HD. Most importantly, I wanted to put my PlayStation in here and there's only one HDMI out and it goes to the entertainment center. So you can unplug that and plug your PlayStation in the back of this, but then you get no audio because it's sending it, it, the audio to the infotainment center. So anyways, honestly, this whole entertainment center concept has been a massive thumbs down. Um, I'm gonna probably throw all of it away and get rid of this stupid swinging um, massive cabinet because here, let me move everything out of the way. And so, as you can see here, I took the back out of it because I was trying to figure out a way to hook up my PlayStation. Um, and it's actually a very big, thick cabinet. And um, it also, see, now it doesn't want to close because <laughs> of the beds, the bedding is in the way. Um, it also, whoever's sleeping on this side, this takes up like five inches of sleeping quarters, which, you know, frankly sucks. Um, so honestly, I would have just deleted this. I'm going to put a little articulated arm and buy a, a nice high quality 4K TV from my local electronics store. Um, the rest of the sleeping quarters, um, the little lights in the quarters, uh, they, they glow blue, which is kind of like a night mode, um, which is interesting, but, you know, uh, it'd be nice to be able to dim these, especially because it's in the bed area. So they're not dimmable. These are just on and off. Um, so anyways, that's that's whatever. Um, the So this, there's a night mode on this one. Where is it? It's blue. There you go. Ooh. So anyways. Um... um So, so one other sort of quality control issues when I, when I first picked up the camper, uh, this little trim piece was completely unglued from this face and the guys at Tom Camperland just like 
they said they would fix it and they just put some like wood glue and they taped it up so i didn't see what it looked like as i drove home but when i got home uh you can see like the glue like overflowed and it just kind of doesn't look very good so anyway, it's, it's another little sort of fit and finish um issue i would say and so <clears throat> the other thing that I would point out is, uh, I guess this is a CO2 detector. Um, so you have an outlet right there. And honestly, it's a pretty horrible location for an outlet. Um, your, your feet hit that every time you're going to the bathroom or just going in and out. Um, if you have a little USB thing on there, you end up bending your USB charging cables. So really not the best location for an outlet. Um, not sure why they put it there. Maybe because they're already running electricity for this, the sensor. Um, and that sort of leads into my next gripe. Um, honestly, this is kind of the biggest complaint is for a camper of this much, um, you know, there's a lot of technology in it. It's a cool design. And, and most importantly, for a camper of this price, I find it amazing that there's no inverter. So, so to essentially want to talk about power. So, um, you have, um, you have an outlet right here. Um, you have an outlet by the bed, the one that's poorly placed. You have an outlet right there. That's also poorly located in my opinion um and then you have this uh cigarette lighter uh location uh which is also right where your feet are if you're sitting there um they could have probably moved the cigarette lighter location um right here somewhere underneath the table it would be maybe even protected by the leg of the table maybe put the other outlet in the other side but anyways that is that's that. So, so you know, uh, basically, my gripe about the power is for for such an advanced um, camper, for a camper of this price point, I find it absolutely amazing that it doesn't include an inverter. So when you're parked and let's say you're boondocking, right? It's great. It comes with solar panels that are charging the the two batteries that are in the compartment. But um, the problem is none of the 120 volt AC outlets are active. Um, so, you know, it's really silly, I think. You got two batteries, you got solar power charging the batteries. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't have an inverter that, you know, maybe put it on a switch so you can turn it on and off so it's not wasting electricity when you're not using it, when you don't need it. But honestly, for the price of this camper, uh, you mean you can get an inverter at Harbor Freight for like whatever, like forty bucks. So inverters don't have to be expensive. I happen to previously already own uh, a two thousand watt uh, sine wave inverter, very high quality. That unfortunately I'm gonna have to figure out a way and fi figure out a place to put it in uh, here because it's you know it's not small. Um, but, you know, it's just frustrating because for the price I paid for this camper, I really would like to use my toaster <laughs> or, you know, charge my phone, charge my GoPro. Uh, there's so many things we're charging these days that um, you really need the 120 volt outlets to work. And they only work right now if you're plugged into hookups, into shore power. And so really kind of like frustrating because the only outlet that works in the whole camper is that cigarette lighter underneath the the dinette um and so this is very frustrating and i would say if i had a, one single biggest complaint about the whole serious the serious 820 design is the lack of an inverter is the lack of power at the outlets um I don't think this is asking for too much. I would have gladly taken that in place of the, the entertainment center in place of the microwave of a lot of other things that, um, 
frankly, are expensive. So, you know, uh, I find the lack of inverter, honestly, a really big oversight. I mean, the fact that I can't use the 120 volt outlets uh, that are spread out throughout the cab, uh, throughout the camper, is really unfortunate. You know, we have to charge so many things these days, cell phones, of course, tablets, uh, GoPro, you know, lots of other things that, uh, like my headlamp, all these things that we have now that charge via USB, which is obviously 120 volt. Um, you know, it's really unfortunate that a camper of this price does not have a simple inverter to make use of the two batteries that are underneath um, in the battery bin. And so, you know, you can get a cheap inverter at Harbor Freight. Like I said, the inverter I bought, I think on Amazon, the 2000 watt sine wave inverter was probably a couple hundred bucks. Um, I would have gladly taken um, that over the microwave or over the entertainment center, uh, things like that. So honestly, that's my single biggest gripe. Um, I can't charge anything. So I got this huge thing and with all these features and no power. You know, okay, yeah, I have power coming in through the solar. I have power in the batteries, but I can't freaking use it. So the only outlet that works, like I said, is the cigarette lighter underneath the dinette. So I'm going to have to, after paying all this money, try to figure out a, a way to wire in my inverter so that it activates all the uh, outlets in the camper, uh, including the one outside, which is extremely useful. Obviously, you know, you set up a table outside. First thing people are going to want to do is charge their phone. Um, and so, you know, I need to figure out a way to get my, find a place to fit my inverter and then find a way to wire it in so that it activates all the 120 volt outlets. Um, so that is my one biggest complaint. Um, and let's see, you know, it's just the other one was just a little bit disappointed with some of the detail fit and finish, you know, the trim on, on the, this at the dealership already fallen off this this trim breaking off the trim on the sink over there peeling off um, like I said I found tools uh, in in underneath the seats and stuff and uh, the the dust from drilling and these seem like small things and maybe I have too high of expectations but honestly they did such a good job at uh, designing the exterior designing the interior design that uh, you kind of set your expectations a little higher. Um, anyways, um, you know, I did not talk about price so much. I think they retail for like $32,000. Um, I was able to make use of a manufacturer rebate and um, I did a pretty good negotiation with the guys over at Tom's Camperland. And um, I did pretty good. I got it um, at a really good price. Um, you know, still not inexpensive, um, but you know, I got a decent price. Um, do I feel like the price warrants what I got? Look, I don't feel cheated. Um, I think the camper is really good. I'm overall really happy with it. Um, it's just, you know, it's just some design cues, some things like why would they put the charging station in the middle of two pillows you know the lack of inverter um you know uh, where they put the, the the outlet and stuff like that so it's just a small sort of small things the tiny sink the massive uh massive uh microwave that's kind of useless anyways i don't want to get too repetitive uh the only other thing i would say is the windows kind of scratch a little bit easy um you know, I went by a tall tree when I was parking it on a side street and I put a nice long scratch on my big window. Um, so uh, that's neither here nor there. There's not much they could do about that. That just that's just what the material does. You know, any sort of polycarbonate or lexan or anything like that scratches way easier than glass. So, you know, not much you could do about that. But I would say just be very careful. When you're parking and all this kind of things, you don't want to scratch your your really nice windows. Um, let's see. And uh, so, you know, as far as upgrades that I think I want to do, obviously the inverter, like I said, I need to figure out how to wire it up to the rest of the rest of the camper. 
Um, I want to maybe replace the sink with a, a little bit deeper one. And, you know, I've been thinking about maybe down the road when these batteries wear out, um, getting two lithium ion batteries uh, from Battleborn, as far as the research I looked at. Um, they're really expensive, but you can actually drain them down, you know, like you do your cell phone almost all the way, as opposed to the sort of HGM batteries that we use where you can only drain them down, you know, actually kind of a small percentage. And if you do frequently do it more than that, then they will eventually die off and that's not cheap either. Um, so there's definitely some advantages. Uh, you get more amp hours and stuff like that. So maybe down the road, uh, when it comes time to service the batteries, I might consider and look into the lithium batteries from Battleborn. Um, so lithium batteries, maybe, uh, deeper sink and most importantly, the, um, inverter. Oh, and I'm probably going to look for a new replacement uh, solar controller and if I could mount it not underneath the the step uh, where it is now I'm gonna try to do that so I can keep an eye on it um, so that's it guys you know I didn't want to seem um, too negative you know um, they really did get so much right you know obviously they got enough right to where I wanted to buy the camper and I did buy it uh, I drove to another state to pick it up um, I did believe in what I saw that much. Um, then maybe that's why I'm being so harsh on it. Uh, it's because, man, if they just paid attention to a couple more things, you know, cabinets that that don't fail right away and things like that, it'd be such a home run. I mean, honestly, this review would be nothing but, you know, nothing but good things to say. Um, you know, uh, it just seems like some things are just common sense design things, you know, like not putting the outlet in between the two pillows, you know, stuff like that. Not putting the, the thermostat right above the, the stove. Anyways, um, my one note to a new camp, um, is I don't think it would be that difficult seeing as people order vehicles with different colors different trim packages, you know, stuff like that. Um, it wouldn't be too difficult, I think, as a company to offer models that were maybe a little bit stripped down, meaning no microwave, no entertainment center, and lower the price. I think that would result in possibly more sales. And I know for me, um, I'd be happier because I don't really see a point to the microwave. Um, I don't, I'd much rather have an oven, honestly. Um, and you know, um, the entertainment center, I'm going to end up redoing it anyways. Frankly, in the year of ownership, close to a year that I've had, I've never felt the need to turn on the TV. Honestly, uh, it's more for possibly my kids down, my kid down in the future. Um, that's why I was thinking about the PlayStation. I might play PlayStation before, uh, I watch TV, but, um, you know, uh, the speakers are shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they're just little cardboard crappy speakers. Um, so really, uh, just give us an option to delete the entertainment uh, system. Maybe pre-wire it. Leave the wires hanging out. You know, um, leave the power in the over there so we can just install our own TV leave a hard point for uh, a TV mount. Um, and with the microwave, you know, like I said, an oven would be much more useful um, or just let us order it without the microwave. Anyways, um, that's my almost one year review of my time with my Cirrus. Uh, I hope I just didn't come off too negative. Like I said, I'm mostly pretty happy uh, pretty proud to walk back to my car and see the beautiful camper. I get lots of great comments. I get lots of questions. Uh, people always walk up and, you know, we're always curious to look inside of it and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, you know, I'm going to continue to tweak it and make it better. Um, but, you know, I just wish as a full, you know, as, as a sort of first owner, um, 
I just wish a few things were a little different. You know, anyways, I covered all that. So, all right, guys, uh, maybe I'll do another video in another year and see how she's holding up. All right. All right. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Other than that, um, I'll see you around.